Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Michael Noland here. Tonight we're going to be discussing top 10 hits, for the most part, that you could swear was a number one hit. As a matter of fact, there are five examples on the thumbnail you looked at when you saw this video. Only one of those examples is an actual number one hit. But before we get into that, I do have a couple of announcements I want to make. First of all, I'm going to be off for the better part of this next week, so if there is a slowdown in video uploads, you'll understand why. I have a surgical procedure I have to go through, and I don't know how long I'm going to be in recovery after that, but you can bet I'll be back as soon as I possibly can. I really enjoy putting these videos together for you guys. And another thing, if you haven't seen my latest video on rock icons way past their prime, you might want to take a look at that. Now I gave a fair amount of criticism to certain rock stars who are not giving their best, but I also devoted the second half of that video to singers who either adjusted because of lack of vocal range or their voice changing over time, or in the case of one singer, a singer who got himself a vocal coach and got back his original amazing vocal range. And of course, I'm talking about Kenny Loggins. Now, the vocal coach that Kenny Loggins used was Ken Stacy. I even quoted Ken several times in that video regarding his position on just how overworked some singers are on the touring circuit. Well, Ken got a hold of me right after I uploaded that video, and we're in the midst of setting up an interview. I'm telling you, I'm excited for this interview. Ken is not only the vocal coach who helped Kenny Loggins, but he's coached Richard Marks, Jason Derlotka of Journey, and many more. But not only that, he was also one of the coaches for the TV show American Idol. This guy has over 30 years touring, supplying instrumentation and backing vocals for the likes of Elton John and Michael Jackson. Of course, I'm very excited for that interview coming up. You know, I think the whole approach of keeping yourself in top performing shape, whether it's your body or your vocal cords, as being absolutely essential. So that should be an exciting show right there, and I'm looking forward to that as well. Okay, so back to the idea of songs from your past that you could just swear had to be a number one hit. Now these are songs that I've personally chosen. Some of these songs can be identified as a one hit wonder, but all of them I could have sworn if I hadn't looked up the statistics hit number one on the charts. First up by the band Sugarloaf. Green-Eyed Lady. Now, the band had problems with this particular song. They had to supply the record company with several different versions. Of course, the album version is much longer and the preferred version to listen to if you ever get a chance. What wound up as the major hit for this band, though, was the intermediate version, which includes some of the extended musical interlude from the album. Once they had this version down, the song shot all the way to number three. Now, Sugarloaf isn't a one-hit wonder, not in the true sense of the word. They did have a follow-up number nine hit, Don't Call Us, We'll Call You. But every time I hear this song, I could swear everybody knows this song as being a true number one hit. Another favorite of mine that I just absolutely was sure was a number one hit but only made it to number two, The Rapper. Boy, I love this song. This is such a positive statement and a warning to women everywhere. But don't worry, this song at least hit number two. But when you think of the song that beat it, you can understand why. The magnificent ballad by Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Waters. But you know, when I listen to classic rock radio these days, it seems that The Rapper gets more airplay than Bridge Over Troubled Waters these days. The next song is by a band that I just think is one of the best band names ever created. Of course, I'm talking about Vehicle by the Ides of March, and this song reached as high as number two, which is curious considering that it is still considered the fastest rising single in Billboard history. But as quickly as it rose to number two, it was stymied by the Guess Who's Amazing American Woman. 
Another song that I was absolutely sure was a number one hit was the song Black is Black, but you know, despite its best efforts, it only got to number two in Britain and only number four in America. However, it did reach number one in Canada. Another song that charted kind of similarly to that song was by Steeler's Wheel, Stuck in the Middle with You. In the United States, it charted only to number eight, in Britain, number six, and number two in Canada. Now at the time, I could have swore this had to be a number one hit. Locally, this song was played absolutely day and night, but singer Jerry Rafferty, of course, would chart much higher with his magnificent solo effort, Baker Street. By the way, that song has one of the best sax playing I've ever heard on a top 10 hit. Up next, In the Summertime by Mungo Jerry. Certainly, this has to be a number one hit, right? Well, you're right. It was a number one hit throughout the world. That is, except for in the United States, where it only charted to number three. Now, I won't say that this next track is obscure, because I, I've got to believe every true rock fan has heard the wonderful Black Betty by Ram Jam. What I found quite interesting is that it charted as high as it did. Back then, I remember hearing this a couple of times, primarily on FM. But surprisingly, this band's version hit as high as number 18 on the Billboard charts. Amazing. And by the way, those examples on my thumbnail that you clicked on for this video, the only number one on that thumbnail is David Essex, Rock On. Now that's almost not true. He did have two number one hits in Britain, but only Rock On got number one in both Britain and the United States. Another one of those bands on the thumbnail that you would think had a number one hit was from the band Golden Earring and their hit Radar Love. This one was the biggest surprise out of these songs to me. It only charted to number 10, barely making the top 10. And yet over the years, we hear this song on classic rock radio almost daily, don't we? It may not have risen as high as some of the other songs on this list, but its replayability has been amazing. Now another song is kind of a number one hit and not a number one hit at the same time. And of course I'm talking about the magnificent Spill the Wine by Eric Burden and War. You know, this is one of my favorite songs of all times. It's almost on every single playlist that I have. I never get tired of hearing this song. And of course, Eric Burden had number one hits with the Animals and War was very successful on their own. But as a combined Eric Burden and War, this was their only major hit. Now this song kind of falls in between the cracks here. In Cashbox, it was rated number one but only got as high as number three in Billboard. Either way, this song just sends you places when you listen to it. It's got a complete story in it, and you're not sure if the singer is actually in a dream or if he slipped into another reality. And what about Norman Greenbaum's Spirit in the Sky? Certainly, that has got to be a number one hit. Wrong. It only got as high as number three on the Billboard charts. However, this has got to be one of the most successful top 10 hits in recorded history. You know, I've met Norman Greenbaum over the years several times. When he had his hit, he opened up a downtown coffee house type of thing, almost underground establishment. So I would find any excuse to pay to go to his club. Of course, it was years later after meeting Norman Greenbaum as a teenager and just a pure fan, I would meet up with him once a week and sell the man whatever he needed as a chef. He would serve as a chef at several of the finest restaurants up in the Russian River area, about 60 miles north of San Francisco. Truly an amazing artist who has worn many hats over the years. All right, that about covers my list for tonight. I do have one more song to bring up. What song and by what artist was a number one hit on both sides of the Atlantic, and yet this artist never again charted another single in their entire career. They are the only artist to have a number one hit and yet never chart 
on Billboard again. And by the way, this is a guilty pleasure of mine. This came out when I was still a young teenager and I love this song. And there's no reason why I should say that I love this song, except that I love this song. And of course, I'm talking about In the Year 2525 by Zager and Evans. All right, so before I was gonna take a few days off here, I just wanted to leave a video with you guys that might make you think. What are some of the songs you could swear were number one, but weren't? Feel free to share in the comments your choices. The names you see in front of me are brand new subscribers. If you enjoyed tonight's video, please give the video a thumbs up. Those thumbs ups always helps a video get a wider recognition on YouTube. And of course, I always appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, so that about covers it for tonight. I'm Michael Nolan. This is The Bottom Line, and I'll see you in my next video.